courtesy of those listening to the meeting, I'm requesting everyone in the audience to please turn off your electronics device or put them on vibrate. Later, later in the meeting, up to 30 minutes will be provided for individuals to address the board on matters concerning the operation of the Marion County school system or the school board only. Presentations to the board are limited to five minutes and are televised. If you wish to address the board regarding a regular agenda item or matters on which the board customarily take action, you must first complete a peach form located in Kevin's Christian's hands. Russell, he needs to wear the headset. If you wish to address the board regarding a public hearing or a student disciplinary matter, please complete the lime green form. This form must be fully completed and received by the board secretary no later than 5.40 p.m. The uh, procedures to applicable for each are on a separate sheet. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mrs. Nancy Stacy, District 1. Here. Mrs. Carol Lee, District 2. Present. Ms. Angie Boynton, District 4. Here. Ms. Kelly King, District 5. Here. Mr. Bobby James, District 3. Here. Mr. George Thomas, Superintendent. Here. Mr. Stephen Lake, Board Attorney. Here. Inspiration and Pledge will be presented by Mr. Dan Davis, Interim Director of Career and Technical Serv uh, Education. Please introduce the students who will be providing the inspiration and leading us in the pledge this evening. Superintendent Tommen, Chairman James, members of the board, it's with great pleasure that I introduce to you tonight two outstanding Marion County Career and Technical Education students. Kelsey Carson is a senior health science, allied health assisting student and member of HOSA at Forest High School. Kelsey will lead the pledge for tonight's meeting. And Shelby McCubbin, is a senior at Marion Technical Institute, Business and Finance Academy, and president of the Skills USA Club at MTI. Shelby will provide the words of inspiration for tonight's meeting. Kelsey and Shelby, both, and I'm gonna ask them to join me now. I'll just ask you. <laughs> are just two of the over 13,000 students enrolled in career and technical education <coughs> program in Marion County Public Schools. So it's with great pleasure I recognize these two outstanding <coughs> students in career and technical education, Kelsey Carson and Shelby McCubbin. Kelsey. Everyone, please rise and join me in the pledge. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Thank you for the introduction, Mr. Davis, and thank you, Kelsey, for doing the pledge. And thank all of you for the opportunity to be here tonight. I'll be reading you guys a short story written by Randy Reynolds called The Other Side of the Wall as, we, as the inspiration for tonight. There was once a young woman who took great pride in the growth and care of the flowers in her flower garden. She had been raised by her grandmother, who taught her to love and care for her flowers as she herself had done. So, like her grandmother, her flower garden was second to none. One day, while looking through a flower catalog she often ordered from, a picture of a plant immediately caught her eye. She had never seen blossoms on a flower that looked like that before. I have to have it, she said to herself, as she immediately ordered it. When it arrived, she already had a place prepared to plant it. She planted it at the stone wall at the back of her yard. It grew vigorously with beautiful green leaves all over it, but there were no blooms. Day after day, she continued to cultivate it, water it, feed it. She even talked to it in an attempt to coax it to bloom, but it was to no avail. One morning, weeks later, as she stood before the vine, she contemplated how disappointed she was that it had not yet bloomed. She was giving considerable thought to cutting it down and planting something else in its place. It was at this point that her invalid neighbor, whose lot joined hers, called over to her. Thank you so much. You can't imagine how I've enjoyed the blooms on that vine you planted. <laughs> the young woman walked through her gate into the neighbor's yard, and sure enough, she saw that on the other side of the wall, the vine was filled with blooms. There were indeed the most beautiful blooms she had ever seen. 
The vine had crept through the crevices, and it had flowered on not her side, but her neighbor's side of the fence. Just because you cannot see the good result of your labor does not mean that it bore no fruit. As the president of my Skills USA chapter and all of you as board members, we all strive to put in the work that will impact our organization and our community in a major way. Although we do not always see these results immediately, or even ever, our work does not go unnoticed or unappreciated by our peers in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Davis, before we sit down, just talk to us a little bit about the CTA and the program that you have over there. I, I know you are excited about it. Just tell us a little bit to the audience that may be looking at this. CTAE or CTE across the district? Across the district. <laughs> that could take a while. <laughs> Um, yes, we are, we are uh, very excited about the programs we have. I'll start with CTAE first. Uh, our post-secondary programs at CTAE, uh, 10 different medical programs that we offer there, uh, some industrial programs, culinary, commu com excuse me, cosmetology, welding, uh, firefighting, EMT, just a variety of programs that meet the needs of our community. Uh, and I can, I can uh, as I say, talk for a long time on that because we do meet the needs of, of the community and a lot of the people that... Uh, uh, are hired in, in the medical facilities and what have you around uh, the, the uh, area are actually our graduates. And, and, and oftentimes when we go into the medical facilities, in fact, someone was just telling me this week, they went in one office and they had an image done and had a, uh, uh, well, just the medical assistant that met them first. And both the person, the medical assistant and the one that did the image were both graduates of CTAE. And that's very, uh, very uh, heartwarming to know that uh, we meet that need uh, as a post-secondary group. But, that's just part of it. Uh, a much greater number of students are enrolled in the middle school and high school career and technical education programs across the district. As I mentioned, 13,000 students that in one way or another are enrolled in one or more courses of career and technical education, uh, from health-related programs to industrial programs. Skills USA, of course, is, is a major student organization in HOSA. Uh, students get these skills to prepare them for the future, for post-secondary education, on into programs like CTAE or certificate programs at, the, at CF, but also to move on to a four-year degree. And in fact, I will just tell you right now, I, I am the result of a career and technical program, uh, both secondary, post-secondary, and went on to get my, my degree, my four-year degree to teach, and then also a master's degree to be in education administration. So uh, this career and technical programs in Marion County schools and in schools across the state of Florida open doors for students to uh, to really excel in, um, in what they've chosen to do as a career path. And uh, we believe wholeheartedly that all students, regardless of what their, their aim is when they're uh, in school, they're preparing for a career. We believe that, whether they're preparing for the University of Florida or Florida State or wherever it is, or to go to a firefighting program, they're all preparing for careers, and that's what we're about. We believe it, that it benefits all students, and um, that's a real quick... Okay. How far along have we got on the welding program out there? The welding program is going very well. Uh, our enrollment this term is up. Uh, and if you drive by there and drive on the back side of the campus, you'll see the new structure going up. That's the outside welding pavilion that's being built now. Uh, facilities doing a great job with, with that and providing us uh, a great uh, facility to teach that and expand it. Uh, doing very well. Okay. And is, is the Young Parent Program under... Under your umbrella. Yes, Young Parent Program is also under CTAE, uh, uh, expectant uh, high school students or, or I should say just teens can come to CTAE and take their courses there, both health related and parenting courses and some of the academic courses also. Okay. Yes. And I would just like to say this, if you have not had a chance to go on, on the campus over at CTAE and just look at what we do. It's amazing what we do, and I just want to say hats off to you and the people that's over there. Thank you, sir. I, I appreciate that. We do. We do a great job. I invite you to come and visit. I wanted to say, I, I took a field trip out there last fall, and um, I'm very, very impressed. But I wanted to ask Kelsey and Shelby, is a, requ is a prerequisite for you all to get into your program having long, beautiful hair? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anybody out there with short hair. They're all just... <laughs> okay. Board, anybody else? Okay. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you all. Mr. Superintendent. Board, with the exception of JD 16-28 under item SD 42, which has been withdrawn entirely from the agenda, I recommend approval of the agenda for the January 12th, 
2016 school board meeting with the materials in the board packet. Those materials distributed to board members at the meeting, <coughs> audio recording and DVD included as part of the official record of the meeting. May I have a, have a motion on the superintendent's recommendation? So moved. Second. It was moved by Ms. Boynton, second by Mrs. Uh, Ely. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. The motion passed five zero. May I have a motion to approve the minutes for the November 17, 2015 special board meeting and moot meeting organizational. November 17, 2015 board of directors leasing corporation organizational. November 19, 2015 administrative briefing and work session. November 24, 2015 school board meeting. December 8th, 2015 school board meeting. December 10th, 2015 school board administrative briefing and work session. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. It was moved by Mrs. Ely, second by Ms. King. Are there any additions or corrections in, the, uh, in these minutes? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. The motion passed 5-0. Ms. Judy Sinetti, Public Education Foundation Officer, would like to recognize a new business partner for Oak Crest Elementary School. Ms. Sinetti. Good evening, Chairperson James, members of the board, Superintendent Tommen. We had took a little break for Christmas holidays, but it is a new year and time for new business partners. So I will be seeing hopefully a lot of you in your upcoming board meetings. I would like to ask Principal Principal Dudley of Oak Crest Elementary School and Miss Chestnut from Cox Communication to join us at the podium. And some of you, of course, recognize Devin Chestnut. She's very active here in our community. Devin served for many years on the board of directors of the Public Education Foundation and was involved with all of our programs there and remains a very good friend of the Public Education Foundation. And Cox is very kind and generous to us and to the events that we hold, particularly our Golden Apple Teacher Recognition Gala. And um, Cox Communication also business is a business partner with Howard Middle School. But Devin came forward and said that they would like to also sponsor another school. And so we are so pleased that we were able to put her together with Miss Dudley from Oak Crest Elementary. I know that they have been wanting to have a new business partner. So ladies, I've got some plaques for both of you to hang in your office and your school. And I'll give you these and let Mr. K Mr. Christian take a picture. And then Miss Dudley, I'd like to have you the opportunity to say something. Okay. No, thank you, sir. My sling won't fit in the picture. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You guys have no idea the search for a business partner. I have made packets. We beat the bushes. Anybody coming through our door got one and, and got the spiel. So um, on behalf of Oak Crest Elementary School, I want to thank Cox Communications and Ms. Devin Chestnut for being our business partner this means a lot and not only did we gain a business partner but we also gained a wonderful person to work with we've already I mean <coughs> we've already been working together and she is just wonderful so we're very appreciative we have a lot of great things going on at Oak Crest Elementary School and we just added one more great thing and that's <coughs> Ms. Chestnut thank you well, I would just like to thank the Marion County School Board and the Education Foundation for having this program. It's a great program. Cox strongly believes in supporting education in our communities. And you may not know, but our founder, James M. Cox, was actually a school teacher before he entered the media world. So um, education is very important to our company and it will continue to, do, to be very important. We love our partnership with Howard and we plan on continuing that. But we had the opportunity to add Oak Crest, which is great. Um, I was born and raised in Marion County, went through the, um, the school system, Anthony Elementary, in North Marine Middle and High, so um, 
So being able to come and work with schools is um, very important to me, and I'm glad that I work with a company that supports that. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. And I just wanted to let you know that it's very exciting also that Cox is business partner with Oakcrest, who has our IB magnet program, and Howard Middle School, which is also our magnet program. So they have a lot in common now besides just, um, just working with Devin and her wonderful staff. So thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you guys at many more meetings. Yes, Mr. James? I was just sitting here just wanting to thank you for working so hard to get uh, to get business partners for us. I know Cox, Cable, uh, Cox has been with us a long time. Yes, yes. And, uh, and as I go through this process and as we begin to cross people off the list <laughs> that do not have a business partner, keep Cox in mind because they may expand next year and we would love to have them. <laughs> uh, no pressure or anything, Devin, no pressure. <laughs> Okay, they're doing good, but we got we got lots of folks that don't partner with any schools. Okay, we got we got to find them. When you're hot, you're hot, Judy. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anybody have any other thing? Okay, thank you. Good night. Okay. Individuals who completed the appropriate form prior to 540 will have will now have the opportunity to address the board. Before you begin your presentation, it is required that you state your uh, your name and address for the record. Additionally, please spell your last name. Matters dealing with student discipline, including expulsion, will be scheduled at the conclusion <coughs> of the televised portion of this meeting. Parents wishing to address the board regarding a disciplinary matter will have the opportunity to do so at, at that time. I will now ask the, uh, the school board attorney to explain some additional points. Thank you, Mr. James. If you do plan to address the school board tonight, please be aware of the school board procedures. Copies of them are available from Mr. Christian or from one of the front tables. Under the school board's procedures, AV presentations are permitted if you provide them at least 48 hours prior to the meeting to the school board's assistant. Audiovisual presentations are limited to a total of five minutes. Use of any student's name except by his or her parents or guardian or identifying references to or identification of other students and their families is strictly prohibited. Based on time consideration, the school board by a majority vote may rightfully limit the number of presentations on any one topic, shorten the presentation time, move public comment time to a different position on the agenda, or eliminate the public comment time altogether. Back to you, Mr. James. We have no speakers. Nobody want to talk to us tonight. Okay. May I have a, a, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, agenda with the exception of item C14, which has been placed on the regular agenda for discussion. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. It was moved by Ms. Warrington, second by Ms. Zeely. All in favor, signify by saying aye. May I have a motion to adopt the instructional calendar for the 2016-2017 school year? May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. second. It was moved by Mrs. Uh, 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 Boynton and second by Ms. King. Ms. King, you withdrew this, uh, you withdrew this item. I did. Um, I would like to discuss um, the calendar. Um, and, and I want to begin with that. I understand the, um, well, let me backtrack a little bit. The calendar, when I was observing it, I noticed that we had eight early release days. And um, I understand the importance of early release days um, because that's when they do um, quality, hopefully quality, um, professional development for our teachers. However, I did take note and notice that between August 31st and September 28th, there are three early release days in a month period. And then also in the first month and a half, there's three early release days. And um, I'm concerned for a couple reasons. Um, I'm concerned, is it what's best for our students? I'm concerned for um, 
the logistics for parents in daycare for if their students are in elementary school. Um, and I'm also concerned for our teenagers and our youth. You know, what are they doing when they're not in school during these times? Um, so I did bring this up for discussion. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about approving three early release days in a month, you know, actually less than a month. <coughs> okay. Let me go to Ms. Stacy and I'll go with, with the superintendent. Okay, thank you. I would like Mrs. King to know that I also called to pull this from the agenda for all the same reasons. And I spoke with Ms. Brenda and she told me you had just pulled it. And so we're on the same page. Okay. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, thank you, sir. Just a couple of things, and I'm going to have a couple of other folks come up here. I wasn't sure why you had, had, had pulled this, Mrs. King, so I've got some people that can talk about professional development or the actual creation of the calendar. So I'll address the actual creation of the calendar right now, if you can. And, and I wanted to share with you, and I appreciate your appreciation for the need for professional development. So if we need to go that direction, I, ha I have Renee Dudley with us. The actual calendar itself w was created to, with two ideas in mind, and one was to front load our early release professional development days before the testing season. We've had as many as 10 days before with early release days, and now we're at eight days right now. We wanted to get those done before February the 20th. The issue that I think you're addressing is the what seems like it seems like every week or every other week we're having some kind of professional development or some kind of time off from school. And what we did was we spread that out as best we could. If you take a running calendar, and you know Mr. Burke is, is a person here at the district office that actually coordinates the actual putting of all this together after we give in, input to him, it, you can see the running calendar. We do have, try to have an in-service activity, whether it's a full day or a partial day, and then a couple of week breaks, then another in-service and more breaks. We have to consider the end of the nine weeks where we have full day work days. Thanksgiving breaks, Labor Day, and things like that. So what we've done is attempt to spread things out as best we can and front load the, our calendar and that's the product, excuse me, the product that you see before you tonight. Okay. I, I can address any other question. If we have specific questions from Ms. Dudley or Mrs. Krasalka, they can address them also, but I'm happy to listen to other, the board's additional concerns. Yes. Um, I've had comments from, um, very concerned parents who I said, Mrs. Ely, if you can do anything this last year on the school board, please change those um, half days because it really puts a lot of inconvenience on the parents of, of kids. What do they do with them? It would be better to, to have those um, staff development days as full days, and that's what one parent had suggested, <coughs> and just add a day out at the end of the year rather than the half days because it really is inconveniencing families. And like Ms. King said, you know, we've got kids, the parents have to go to work. Are they just letting the kids run around the neighborhood or what? So um, I'm totally against these half, these early dismissal days altogether. I don't know how you want me to address those. I can address those one at a time and just share some other information for food for thought or, or however you'd like to do that. Okay. Maybe first of all, first. Well, let's listen to all of them and then yeah. we bring up some okay. people. Yeah. All right. It was Ms. Uh, Stacy had the floor and then we'll come to Ms. Boynton. Okay, and I would like to thank Mrs. Ely because if she can accomplish that, that's a huge accomplishment her final year and we will hurrah her forever. And we will recognize you every year and thank you for that service. Um, since we're having so many early dismissal days up front, why can't they just go have it before school starts, this, this staff development? If, if we need so much staff development the first month of school, why can't we just have it before school ever starts and just do it? Okay, Ms. Boynton. I was, not, I was not going to comment on the same level as, as my colleagues, but I, I, I've had parents that have some concern, but I also look at it as um, the teacher in service is, is very important. To me, it's very important to have professional development, and I, um, I, I wanted to ask the superintendent, was during the professional development for teacher in service, is that part of the contract that's negotiated, or how is that done with the... You know, <coughs> Teachers Union. Okay. I, How's that? Is that negotiated? Okay. I'll, I'll let the superintendent okay. take I'll, over. I'll go here. back because these, these questions are related. And again, if I need help from the back of the room, you guys jump up here and help me also. The first suggestion in reference to adding a day 
adding a day to, to our contract or something. It would be essentially adding a full teacher day to the contract. Teachers work now 196 days, or, and that's their contract which is negotiated. To add a full day, we were able to sneak in two hours of professional development on early release days, count it as a student day, and also count it as a work day. If you wanted to add days, days as a full day to the uh, teacher calendar, it costs approximately, Teresa, I can look at you, about $890,000 a day for our current staffing plan to add a day to the teacher work calendar. So that's one issue. And then I, I have to say, you would be dealing with the issue, what do parents do with their child on that day also? That's just, just an issue to, for you to be thinking about. Um, in reference, the comment was made, I believe Mrs. Stacia brought up, why don't we have staff development on the first day or ha we do have staff development during preschool. Uh, we have, I think, three, four work days and then an in-service day for teachers to get ready and we do have an in-service. What we'll do during that in-service activity is introduce what we're attempting to do for the entire year and then we think what's very important to have periodic follow-up to that early, excuse me, to that uh, professional development that we started. We don't just want to give it the beginning of the year and give it at the end of the year. We think it's very important to have it ongoing and, and I, we, we think that's very, very, very important. Uh, and so I think that addresses the, the two questions that, that, you, that you mentioned thus far. Okay. Ms. Is Boyd. it part of the contract, union contract? Yes, ma'am. Well, well, the teachers have a 196-day contract. It is part of their contract right now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. May I say something else, Mr. James? Well, in light of the heavy testing that, that our students are subjected to, uh, I kind of understand the early release day, and I understand the professional development, uh, how need, needful it is for our, for our staff. I, I think that um, I think that maybe this is something – uh, Mr. Chair, if we could table and then maybe have an, another work session on it so we can have further discussion on it. I think it would be more appropriate because there are some issues that, you know, I like to balance out with the professional development as well as the testing that our students are exposed to. Okay, I don't, I don't mind uh, calling for a table of this motion, but I'd just like to share it with you now. I, I know we always look at, we have a tendency sometimes to look at other people's pots. My son working in Alonzo County and he's in the elementary school. They have a work day every work every Wednesday. They have one every Wednesday. And I just want all of you to, to understand that uh, that there's some other people out there that's that's really doing this every every Wednesday. Okay, what I'm hearing and what I've heard in the past is that the in service is important that we make sure all of the teachers are on the same page within a, a department or within the school. So I want us to be real careful when we when we think in terms of taking that out and where we take it, take the time away from this teacher to collaborate without interruption. Because I, I will tell you this, people will deal with our kids, and just like the, I'm almost certain the people in Gainesville know that they will have, on Wednesday, they have a half a day. And they, they take time to make sure they, they work with their kids and have places for them to go and do things for them. So I just want you, I want us to, I want you to understand. I understand the importance of having places like the Boys and Girls Club and things like that. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say that they, if we have a plan that we need, that the, that the teachers and the, the administration and all those people need to get these people on the same page, I think we need to uh, keep that. But I will table this at the board can give me can give me a, a just reason. Uh, is there anything else any of the any of your people want to talk to us about about the importance? The, the only other thing I would add is is on those early release days, we do have follow up for district in service, but, but most of our schools also do some things that are unique for their individual school, and we have half of the early release days, three or half of the early release days essentially are for the schools to do. Early release, early release activities also. They do a lot of book studies. They, they may be addressing specific needs of that particular school. So it, it's, not, it's not wasted time. And, and, it, and it's, it's hugely, I believe it's hugely important. Our staff believes it's hugely important. We've had early release days established in our community for the last 20 or 25 years. And, and, and I think, and Mr. James has pointed out, 
Many districts around the state have early release days or some configuration of that. Corporate America has professional development, believes in that. There are other ways to deliver professional de development, but they become very, very expensive, if you, especially if you go into the, the, the situation with adding days to the teacher contract. You know, I see Jane Elsman back there, and Jane, I hate to call on you, but I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Jane, you, you've been out there, I, I guess, well, come up and talk to us for a little bit because you, you take advantage of this or you don't take advantage of it. Just give us an idea of what's, what we're talking about here. I am a huge fan of teacher and staff professional development because I believe that when you're working with students, you have to create that community of learners. And having ongoing professional development reinforces exactly what Mr. Tomlin was saying. We can't do every, and what you've been saying, we can't do all the professional development at the beginning or the end of the day of the year because we're constantly doing checks. We're looking at what we need to improve on now. We're looking at our data. We're making adjustments. And it's really important to have your staff together and use that time so that you can improve your school performance. It's all about the students. It all boils down to we take this time so that we can become better prepared and we can be better serving the students in our school community. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, well, some of the things that we do with the students, we, on one of the early release days, we gave a practice PSAT test to our entire school community. And we were able to use that as a <coughs> learning experience at our, for our students. I, I think that being able to use time with our students creatively is really important. And those early release days give us that opportunity to use our time creatively. So we were able to do that with our school. We had the students analyze the data. And then that afternoon, we looked at our data that the students had analyzed and looked at what we could do as a school community to help improve our student achievement. This past early release day with our students, now I'm not, uh, and I can talk about our staff as well, but with our students, we were able to take our ninth, 10th, and 11th grade students through scheduling. We gave them an orientation to all of the different programs. It was wonderful hearing about all of the CTE programs, but a lot of times the students in our schools don't really know about the programs outside of the ones that they're involved in. So we were able to totally educate our ninth, 10th, and 11th grade students so they could make good choices for the coming school year. And we also took our 12th grade and we did a graduation fair, so to speak. And we looked, had them look at what are you doing when you graduate? And we had them carefully examine what their plans were, where they were with their plans. And we were able to bring in speakers to help them formulate their plan a little bit more solidly. So the work that we do with our students and also with our staff is really, really important during that time. We use it for book studies. We use it for collaboration. We use it for exploring new technology. But most of all, it's all driven by what can we do at our schools to improve student performance. And without that time and without it being ongoing, we wouldn't be able to make the gains that we've made over the last couple of years. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Stacy. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Elsperman. Um, when we were talking about this originally, it seems as though we were told that Citrus County down the road, they take six early dismissal days, not eight. I don't remember, or someone in here that gave that presentation might help me. Is that right, Mrs. Dudley? Ms. Dudley, come up, please. hours or something like that built in their first couple of pre-service days and then they had ongoing once a week maybe Wednesdays or Mondays I can't remember that was that. another di one district took off like an hour on a certain day or something but I thought Citrus County took six days I really would like to table this and talk some more about it because if we've got three early dismissal days slam up right at the front then I, it makes me wonder if we're really using those days that we had just before school started to its full, um, you know, organization to all, because students are still coming and going and it's so crazy that first month of school already. And I have to tell you, I've got a principal sitting here that also was a principal in A school and she 
she understands how difficult these early dismissal days are and she her her words are very credible to me i have a school teacher sitting here who's telling me the same thing i hear from other school teachers that a lot of the training that they get in the afternoon is a complete waste of their day and the waste of their time and so i really would like for us to talk about possibly dropping a couple of these days and re-examining this calendar um, and maybe get a little more together those first early dismiss the, fir the the teacher work days if you're going to put training in there then I don't understand why you have to train them and then they go to school a few weeks and then we take another half day and we go a couple a week and we take it just it's it's I don't know it's like monkey business it doesn't make sense and so um, why we need them all smushed in there and then all of a sudden we can go for a while without one there's just no consistency it and me, and so I really would like for us to consider tabling this and let's, ha let's have a little more discussion about it I'm, I'm sure we will thank you miss Dudley can I say something you sure can okay. Um, with the dates, we were very strategic in what dates we picked for the early release. Actually, we brought it to the PD Council and they selected it as well. If you looked at the calendar, it was approximately every 14 days there was an event, whether it was an early release day, whether it was a work day, whether it was a holiday, whether it was um, any of that variety. So it wasn't that they were all rammed up together or just randomly put up there and they were done prior to the first set of state testing. So there was a reason and a rationale behind that. So, And unfortunately, we cannot have two or three days of professional development in our pre-planning days with our teachers due to contracts and so forth, or otherwise we would love that, so. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Ms. Ms. Boynton, you had something. I just wanted to second her motion. Okay, before we, table. okay. Mr. Superintendent, you had some. I, I want, want to just ask the board to please be aware that it's very important that we notify our community when school starts. We have been saying for about 16 or 18 months now that we were going to be starting school for students on August the 10th. And we back up five days for, normal, for teachers. We back up another day for brand new teachers. And I think it's hugely important that, that we proceed down this avenue. I, I hear your interest in wanting to discuss those days. I'm not asking you to approve August the 10th as the first day of school for students, but I'm real close to saying that. So there is some urgency in, in addressing this at, at the next board meeting so we can publicize this for our community. Okay, we, we're getting ready. It was Ms. Boynton's motion to table it and I will I accept Mrs. Stacy's second of the motion. Okay, before I do that, I'll, I'll go to Ms. Stacy for a comment. I really, Mr. Tom, don't have a problem with saying that we don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with the start date. If you want to put that out, I mean, I will say, can we break it up and make a motion that we only vote on the start date and then we vote to table the if, rest if, of the if calendar? It's, if it's the board's feeling that, that you have no objection to the the 10th as the first day of students and then we can begin to publicize that and to make certain and, and mr. Christian's department can do that so I, I appreciate your your your, uh, your acceptance of, of that and we'll okay, go I'm ahead and do that now for the benefit of our parents can I make and a our motion employees. well yeah I already I got one on the we table. don't need an official okay. action on that okay. thank you sir okay we have uh, a motion to take <coughs> uh, the calendar and the motion was made by mrs. Borenton and it was second by mrs. Uh, Stacy all in favor of table and signify by saying aye. Aye. Mr. Superintendent. As when you vote, I want to make one more comment, if I could. Okay. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, the motion passed 5-0. Okay, Mr. Superintendent. What, what, what we will do is I'm going to add this to, to the very next work session, which is going to be lengthy. And I'm also going to go ahead and put the calendar placeholder in your next agenda. Things may overlap here very quickly now. Please don't think I'm trying to rush anything on you. I'll put a placeholder in for, for the calendar at the next available board meeting. I want, so we, we need to get this officially done as soon as we possibly can. That's all I have, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the following donations? $4,203.24 middle school from, uh, from the Public Education Foundation of Marion County from Duke Energy, many grants. 
$1,000 to Bellevue Santos Elementary School from David Melano. $1,000 to Harvard Middle School uh, from the Lady Lake, from the town of Lady Lake. $1,500 to Liberty Middle School from the Ocala Marion County Association of Realtors, Inc. $5,888.85 to Madison Street Academy from the Madison Street Academy PTA. $7,507.42 from Madison Street Academy from the Madison Street Academy PTA. $6,761.42 to, to Romeo Elementary School from the Romeo Elementary PTO. $5,313.44 to South Ocala Elementary School from the South Ocala PTA. $1,000 to Vanguard High School from Scott and Linda Seaman. $2,000 to Vanguard High School from the Vanguard High School Band. $1,390.74 to the Westport School from Ocala Marion County Association of Realtors. $2,000 to Westport High School from the Grammy Foundation. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Yes. Second. It was moved by Mrs. Ely, second by Ms. King. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 For some reason, mine is not. You want to for me to vote for you? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, go ahead. Would you please? I got it. The motion passed 5 0. Ms. Ely, we'll, we'll let you go with the, the numbers this time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, the total, the donations um, $39,574.26. And that's just phenomenal. It's great to hear and to see how much our community appreciates our schools and does it in a way that it can help our, our students and our <coughs> teachers, but that's a lot of money, and, and we so much appreciate your donations. Thank Keep you. it coming. Okay. The next administrative briefing and work session is scheduled for Thursday, January 21st at 9 a.m. The purpose of the work session is at, for the annual review of, the, of charter schools and the Code of Student Conduct, as well as review the strategic plan report on discipline, textbooks adoption, and the proposed re uh, revision to the board policy 2.40, legal counsel. Board, we will start, we will ask for your, uh, your comments and your thoughts on various things. I'll start with Ms. King. Okay, good. Okay, I, I just want to begin with um, Happy New Year and welcome back. Um, I just want to make note of an incident that happened last Thursday. Um, last Thursday, some of us aware and some of us may not be that the Homeless Children's Program was vandalized and had over 1,100 books destroyed along with pajamas and prom dresses. And I would like to recognize what a wonderful community we have because we've had residents step up to the plate and they have washed these pajamas because what had happened is they took a fire extinguisher and it became um, like toxic. So the students couldn't wear the prom dresses or the um, pajamas. And we had wonderful community members actually take these pajamas home, wash them so that they can be used by um, our most neediest students. And um, I just, I'm just gonna recognize that and happy new year. Okay. Ms. Stacy. Well, I've had some teachers request that I bring to the board the option of why we, they cannot request paper-based testing in the middle and high school. There's, the teachers have told me that it's just so difficult with the computers and the computer labs and doing everything 
is there any way that, and I've been begged to talk to you about the possibility of maybe this year going to a paper-based testing to give them some relief at them. Th this happened to be middle and high school teachers talking to me, so. It, Want to know what the options are, can we do it? It is a state requirement that we have computer-based okay, okay. testing. It's a state requirement. It's, it's not our idea. Well, I, guess, I would more, be more than happy to, to do, attempt to do something. Well, I guess they, they were of the opinion that you could request paper-based. So I don't, that's why I'm asking. We have requested. That's been part of the FADS. Uh, actually, our, our... Didn't know if it had run out. The time had we, run We've out. attempted to try to, to get that, and, and the state is saying no. And their, their, their argument for computer-based testing is it can give you quicker, more instantaneous mm -hmm. results. But... As you know from last spring's assessment season, we had many, many issues, as did many districts. I hope it will get better this year, but and we do paper-based testing for some makeup tests and things like that. We had one school that actually had to go to a paper-based testing because they missed the window because the, the calendar was so confusing, but it is a state requirement that, that we have the computer testing, and it's expanding every year all the way to third grade, this year, fourth grade, fourth grade and all the way down to fourth grade will be all computer-based testing this year. And it's required we no longer have the option at all. I don't know that we ever had the option. But well, I know there was a, t a time where we could request paper-based. I don't know. We, we phased in the computer-based testing and computer-administered so, assessments. Okay. Well, that's my question. So the window's closed on that yes, option. Okay, thank you. I'll tell them. Okay. Angie, you had something you wanted to dovetail on that? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let Ms. Stacy know. Paper-based testing is something that we're only going to be lobbying the state. Oh, I know that. About yeah. uh, because it is a, a statute. It's in the statute. So just want to encourage all of you when we go to lobby our, our uh, legislators that that's one of the issues that we really, really stick to because we have so many small commun communities, uh, counties that they don't even ha they don't even have the funds to buy the computers. And so that that's one of the things we're really going to be sticking to and pushing. To our, to our legislators this and time. While, while we're on that, I'm still on that paper-based talk. I will be, and I am very much aware of the standardized testing option that we've requested. In fact, I also am the only school board member that belongs to the Florida Coalition of School Board Members because I pay my own dues there. And I will be on a conference call in the morning with legislators through the Coalition of School Board Members. We have a, a the members of that organization will be having a conference call with legislators in the morning about this. Okay, Ms. Ely. Um, I have something totally different to talk about. First, um, going back to Christmas, I went to Emerald Shores, and, and I, I, that's one of my schools that I really, um, I really try to see what's going on and how I can help them. They did something great for Christmas. I'm sure some of you parents that out there have heard of Santa's Secret Shop. Schools have a <laughs> private company come in, set up in a room for, um, for children to come in and purchase things for Christmas presents. Well, Emerald Shores doesn't have um, parent support out there, and they, they wanted to do something like that but never have. So what they did, <coughs> they got together, the teachers and the staff, they made things for the kids to buy. And I went up on stage, and it was... It, the things that they were that they had made were just beautiful, um, and the kids were all excited about, about purchasing them. They were very affordable, but I just want to applaud Emerald Shores and hope that other schools out there, elementary schools specifically, if you don't have the ability to have a Santa Secret Shop, um, see, see about getting your staff together to make stuff. They're already talking about what they're going to make for next year, but and the money went back to each classroom, so it didn't go into the school's internal account, went back to the classroom. But I was very impressed. Um, it, it, was a good, it was a good thing that they did, and they were all so proud of what they had done. Okay, that's, uh, this, this is from um, Ms. Krasalka. I know she sent us an email about transfer requests, and I had asked if, if this is something I could announce. Um, parents, if you have um, applied for a transfer request last year, the deadline um, is you have to fill it out again this year, to, as I understand. And also, if you're interested in a transfer request for your children, for any of them, for the schools that have availability, the deadline for that is... February 15th. So please know that. Uh, contact Tony Burke and um, for more information, but February 15th for transfer requests. 
And the last thing I want to talk about, I went down to Bellevue uh, Publix, and part of the high school band was down there playing music as we're walking in. And um, I, asked, I asked the girl who's holding the container, I said, what's going on? And she told me that they are going to the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade in D.C. on March 13th. And so they're, they're, ma they're playing instruments at all of the all of the Publix, Walmart, trying to collect money for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. So if any of you are interested in making a donation, um, you can uh, go ahead and write a check to Lake Weir High Band Boosters. Mr. Uh, Jennings is the band director, and they're working hard to get enough money so they can go. But they're just so cute playing the big trumpet in front of Publix. I mean, you can hardly walk by there without dropping some money in. But um, please consider helping them out. Uh, that's it. Ms. Boynton. Well, I just want to welcome all, all the teachers back and the students back and say Happy New Year. I was able to go to um, the Ramal's um, fundraising event, and they help out with our tools for teaching and for tutoring, and it was a wonderful event. I, I really, really enjoyed it. And I also had an op opportunity to meet with Helen Hamill of the Marion, um, Marion United for Public Education. And they're uh, doing this uh, a wonderful survey on testing, local testing. And I had an opportunity to sit with her, and, and she went over some wonderful things that they're doing. And maybe I was hoping that sometime in the future, her group could come and bring that information that they are putting together. Okay. Have you invited her? Have you? She said tonight. I told her I would bring it up to the board and uh, see if we could have them come and and give us the information on the uh, testing, this local testing they've, they've been working diligent on so we know what's going on with it from their perspective. We're okay. scheduled to have a report to present before the board at the early to middle part of March. Okay. So I'll be contacting you when we actually have a report to see if I can. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lake. Uh, nothing tonight, thanks. Brenda. Yes, sir. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. James. I do have a number of things I'd like to share with the board to remind the board that next uh, Thursday, January 21st, is our Magnet Expo. We held at MTI from 5 o'clock in the evening till 7 o'clock in the evening. A great opportunity for parents to see the wonderful Magnet programs that we have and help them make decisions about where their children choose to go to school. Last Thursday, we discussed briefly at a work session the Florida Youth Survey. I did forward all those surveys to you. I have not heard back from you. I'm assuming they're fine. We've gone ahead and proceeded with uh, uh, participating in that, and I thank you for letting us participate in that very, very important survey. A point of information, Mr. James and I were riding together yesterday to Orlando to the school board's coalition meeting, and uh, Mr. James just happened to, as we went by a gas station, said, hey, have we realized any uh, savings and the gas prices and fuel prices going down. Of course, most of our fleet is diesel, but the answer is yes. And what I ask our finance department to do is do a comparison of calendar years. So in a comparison of calendar year 2014 and a comparison year of calendar year just ended 2015 with our price of diesel about 79 or almost 80 cents uh, cheaper, we have had a savings of about $470,000. Now, you can't run out and spend that money. I won't let you do that, and <laughs> Teresa will shoot me if, if I make any kind of recommendation. But yes, we have received the benefit of, of gas price, prices going down. This morning, <coughs> our executive staff had a conference call with the DOE along with other superintendents and some information for you. You know it's coming. You've heard our news media talk about this a little bit. School grades for 2014-15, school grades for 14-15 will be released on or about February the 9th. The State Board of Education did meet uh, last week. I forwarded some information to you about that and our school grades, the simulated grades that we received before the holiday season will be the, the grades that our schools receive. Um, one of our schools did not receive a grade because they didn't have the proper number uh, tested. That happened to be the school that missed the computer-based window period. The students did take the paper-based test two or three days later, but they were not included in the simulated grades. We are going to be appealing that. We believe that school will be an A also. It is very important to remember this, and whether our grades are up or down, as we go forward, we need to remember that collectively and individually, we have some very serious questions about the validity and the reliability of the spring 2015 testing season. We have some serious issues with that. 
And another issue with that is we omitted, or the state omitted, we were not able to use the very important component of learning gains. So when we get these grades, yes, they're information, yes, it's important information, but we're not gonna hang our hat on that as we have in the past. In reference to the school grades, we have 23 of our schools, almost half of our schools, that will be participating in the school recognition program. These are schools that either maintained the grade of A or have improved one or, or more grades. You know that those schools receive approximately uh, receive $100 for the number of students that were enrolled during that particular FTE period. The school staff comes up with a plan on how to disperse that to employees and what to do, what to purchase with that, and the school advisory council for each respective school uh, goes ahead and, and approves of that. That has to be done. It's kind of unique. By state law, that has to be done by February the 1st. So you're asking, well, how do we, we don't have grades till February the 9th, but the state has directed us in the conference call today, go ahead and go through the process. If something happens in a school grade changes, then that will, we'll either add another school to it or that school will not be able to participate. And I want to talk a little bit again about the school grades. We, we know that, that, that school grades are important and certainly individual student assessment is very important. But I think a more accurate measure of our success as a school system is our graduation rate. And we talked a little bit about it last week because that is a powerful number. We have our strategic plan that you've worked with, our strategic plan. It's great to have level four or five students in elementary school. It's great to have elementary, middle, and high schools with grades of A but, or B, whatever it might be, but we know that the end result is graduation because that's the last time we touch a child. So I need to thank and salute all of our employees for their contribution to having what I consider to be an outstanding graduation rate. And I, I'm gonna try to, I'll miss somebody, but from custodians to food service workers, secretaries, bus drivers, elementary, secondary teachers, technical service administrators, literally all of our employees play a role in helping our students be successful. Our local news media has been, a, been, it's been very good in, in supporting that, and, and I appreciate what they have done. In summary, in reference to that graduation rate, the state graduation rate is 77.8%. That means four years after a student enrolls in school, they complete satisfactory their high school graduation. 77.8% statewide. Marion County's rate is 80.7%, almost three full percentage points above that. We have gone up for the last six years. This is not a one year, a two year, or a three year deal. This is K-12, it's pre-K-12, it's a huge issue for us. We even have four high schools with over a 90% graduation rate. So I'm very, very proud of our entire school system and all the employees that contributed to that and hats off to, to all of those who did contribute. That's all I have, sir. All right, thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Just some notes uh, from the Central Florida Coalition, some things that uh, we discussed yesterday that, sh that should be of interest to us. One of the things is that we have to, uh, as a board, really discuss whether we are interested in supporting an elected commission of education. We, should, we need to, at some point, have some conversation in reference to that as a board. <coughs> One of the things that we talked about there is that uh, each district need to, go, uh, need to go back to their districts and then uh, they have a discussion with the, the board to find out where we are in terms of that. So I will schedule that. Uh, on one of our work sessions, I don't think we need to have a full-blown work session on it. I just need your opinion okay. and what we can do if we can come to a, a consensus. Uh, one of the other things that we talked about in uh, board is we talked about uh, our certified board membership, and that's coming up with Howie in the Hills. We talked about becoming a certified board members, and one of the things um, that we, we know that the date is coming up on January the 29th. And we need to know if we are really interested in that and we really want to go down there to become to, uh, to work toward becoming a certified board uh, members. And I know we have talked about that. And that's um, Howie in the Hills, Brenda Willett. I think they, uh, Ms. Uh, Patrick Peterson sent us some information. Did y'all get the emails on that? Yeah. Mrs. Uh, King is registered. Okay. Thank you, Ms. King. <laughs> I don't think I should have to register for that course. Okay. That, this, that the course is what uh, is offered every other year, and as the new board has come on, they have taken those particular courses. 
but most of the, most of the people here have had that particular course right. that's being offered that day. I need to check because I've been around a long time. I may have had it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And we uh, and if you want to be involved with that, please let Brenda know and and let's get involved with that. Okay. One of the other things that we talked about that that's very, very important is that we talked about our STEM program. And the STEM program is is as a program that we are involved with 13 other school districts in working with our kids in terms of science and technology. And uh, we, as we, as I listen to the program, it's amazing that uh, we are doing so many things in the district and people don't realize we're doing all of this stuff until we get out, get out there and start dealing with other people and we are on the same page. Uh, one of the things I want to talk with the superintendent, I talked with the superintendent and I want to talk with the board about is that we bought some property over at Vanguard High School, 16 acres over there. And we need, at some point, need to come up with a plan on what we want to do with that property. Is this the time that we need to look at um, putting a stadium out there and look at what we need to do with Booster Stadium? But I think as a board, we need to really just look at what we're doing there. And other than that, I had an opportunity to ride in the caravan along with Ms. King to recognize, uh, to surprise some of our non-instructional employees. And just to see the expression on their face was a wonderful thing when we walk in there and have the balloons and they have an opportunity to talk on television for a couple of minutes and it's exciting. And we recognize the job that they've done. So that I feel very good about that per se. Okay, anything else? For the good of order. Thank you. Before addressing the board on expuls expulsion matters, I wish to acknowledge the board have received an alternative placement list of students through December uh, the 11th, 2015. May I have a motion to may I have a motion to approve the expulsion of students JD 16-30. <coughs> JD 16-31. JD 16-32, JD, JD 16-34, JD 16-35, JD 16-36, and JD 16-37 with educational service through the first semester of the 2016-2017 school year. May I have a motion and a second? So move. So moved by Mrs. Ely. Second. And second by Mrs. King. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. The motion passed, uh, 5 0. In order to, to protect the privacy of, of students, I will be calling a brief recess prior to the uh, proceeding with the early reentry request. Are there any parents in the audience who wish to speak on behalf of a student regarding a disciplinary matter other than their early reentry uh, request? Seeing none, this concludes the televised business portion of the meeting. A I will call a recess at this time, and the time is 633.